yes, on the Culture Studio came to writing, I'm sure she won't mind me saying this, uh, you know, relatively late in life. Despite leaving school at 15 and having dyslexia, she is now, at the age of 80, a prolific writer and storyteller. Her first novel was published when she was a mere stripling of 75, and uh, her fifth novel, The Tangling of the Web, is out, and I believe she's working on her sixth. She's another fabulous woman called M. Gray. She's Millie Gray. She's in her Edinburgh studio. Millie, welcome to the programme. Thank you very much for asking me. Oh, how could we not? Um, tell me about how you came to your first novel published. Were, were you discovered? No, I wasn't. It was actually, I was out speaking to a church group and an old lady at the end said, I liked that story, but I couldn't follow all of it. You see, I never heard a word of it. Have you got it written down? And then I realised she lived read. And when I was looking at her, she was fine, but if I turned away, she'd missed it. So I came home and I said to my husband, I'm going to take all my stories, put them into fictional families, and I'm going to write them up. And I wrote my first novel, and I, in our church, they have great ways of getting money out of you. And one of them was, you could sell a talent. Well, I thought I didn't have a talent to sell, but if you didn't have to buy, sell the talent, you had to buy one. And I did notice there was a Gordon Booth, and he'd been a lecturer at Aberdeen University, and he would edit work. Ah. So I said, that's for me. How amazing. I, how could you not think you would a talent when you're already doing storytelling, Millie? Well, it was... The talents that were for sale were like somebody was going to make your scones. Well have to do that if you like. Uh, and somebody was going to rearrange your garden and your lounge right. and whatnot. And yeah. I thought, oh no, um, I'll just leave it at mm. that. And I had done storytelling for the church anyway. And uh, Gordon, um, he liked my work and he said that the, um, the grammar was awful. And he says, have you heard of a colon? And I thought, well, I've heard it too, but let's get on from there. And uh, so we did, we, he took the book and we did the alterations. Didn't alter the stories, yeah. but we altered the grammar. Well, this is the thing. Grammar can be fixed and altered, but the gift of storytelling, that can't be you know, right. so easily acquired. And in your new novel, uh, The Tangling of the Web, tell us a little, you're going to read a little bit uh, of it for us, but well, what is the setting of this? What is the story of this? The setting is still in Leith. All of my books are based in Leith because that is what I know. I write about what I have experienced and what I know. And this is actually about pubs in Leith and taking them from when they were known the jungle um, to the lovely eating places that <laughs> they are today. And it was the clearing out of the prostitutes. And I always write about strong women. I, I really don't know women that faint all over the place. Um, and this, again, is a woman who meets adversity. How is she going to deal with it? And by the end of my novels, the women will have emerged and they'll have dealt with the problems that had been landed on them. As they do in real life. As and you're, they do. You are going to read a little bit now. Do you need to tell us where we are and who it is and stuff? Well, this is... Um, I'm reading from the part where um, Sally and Luke have just found out that they are a brother and sister. Their mother was a... Most people have delinquent children. They had a delinquent mother. Okay. Um, Sally, he asked gently, was it because of what your mother did to Peter that you suffocated her? Sally pushed herself away from Luke. I never quickened her end, and I'm glad I didn't. Any suffering she was enduring would never, ever have been enough compensation for the cruelty and indifference she dished out. Sally was now in full flow. I admit I jumped up on her bed and I had a pillow in my hand and I was going to smother her. Do you know her dying words were not for you or me, Luke, but for Peter? She wanted him to know she was sorry. Why do people think they can run roughshod over you and then when you can no longer cope with their cruelty, desertion and inhumanity, all they have to say is sorry and that will make it all right. Sorry doesn't rectify anything and it never will. 
Oh, beautifully read there by the author herself, Millie Gray. Uh, that's a, a sample of the new book, The Tangling of the Web. Strong stuff, Millie. And I, I know that you, you write from, from experience. Interesting, it's quite controversial, isn't it, to have a, a rubbish mother uh, uh, as a character. Had you encountered uh, women like that? Um, oh, I did know um, children in my class and um, lassies that I worked with and that didn't have mothers like mine, mm-hmm. I think the greatest gift you can have in life is to have a good mother. Yeah. And, and if you, don't if you have haven't that, got that, yeah. you're at a disadvantage. It's better than a private education. Who is your audience? Does it tend to be an older uh, readership who can identify with your storylines and the characters? Well, I think possibly I would say yes. Last year, 20,000 people borrowed the books from the library. Wow. So that would be a library culture. I mean, my children don't go to the libraries, they buy books. I still wander into the library. So I would think maybe it is older, but also children of school age are looking um, at my work Mm. because it covers the two great changes we had, the end of the Second World War and the introduction of the welfare state. Life before all that was very difficult. And women changed then. There was great changes for women. The women had been working when the men were away fighting, and they now could be independent. They knew they could support themselves. And then the pill came along, and then women were able to decide how many children they would have. And so it was a time of great change. And the welfare state brought so much relief to so many people. You no longer had to worry about being ill and what was going to happen to your family if you couldn't earn money. Yeah, and it's a message that needs to get out there a lot, especially to a generation who are not aware of, of, of that. Um, and clearly, we don't have too much time, but clearly you're an incredibly bright, articulate, energetic woman. You had to leave school uh, at, at 15. What have you done in the in- ensuing years? Because obviously coming is brilliantly inspiring that you've taken up writing uh, when you have done but what what were you doing before um i worked um in the district council i was the first um female uh, personnel officer for the edinburgh district council and i then i also worked in the police department my first husband was killed by a drunk driver and my two children were very young so i went to the police department to work and there was a green faced inspector there so i took him home and married him (laughs) and he's not green faced now oh i bet he isn't with with you with you in his life i I imagine that you're somebody who doesn't have regrets but do you you know it must be funny to think that you're doing this now and maybe you could have been doing it earlier do you think that would have been possible if you had the advantage of you know higher education further education that people have now yes i my regret is that i never got to university that i never got um a good education um everything i've had to learn the hard way Mm -hmm. i mean i passed my hires when i was 35 and i met a lady called liz here and Liz here, uh, I did playwriting with her at a University of Edinburgh class, and I was the first woman to be awarded the Martha Hamilton Award for a piece of creative writing. Millie, you're just fantastic. Did you hear that Muriel Gray was on the show earlier? We were wondering if you were related. No, I wish I was. <laughs> she wish, she'll wish she was to you too. She was very interested to hear about you. Um, we, we, as I say, we don't, we don't have much time. But what would you... I know you still do workshops and authors' visits as well as the writing. I think this, you've got the sixth novel underway. What would you say to anyone listening now who's maybe of an age with you thinking, I've got a story, but it's too late to do that now? Well, not only stories... Every one of us has got a dream that we had. And if you've got a dream in the drawer, open the drawer and take it out and just go and do it. Don't bungee jump off the castle. (laughs) But if you wanted to paint or to write or anything, do do that. And I would also like to say, you know, bounce your ideas off your friend. I have a friend, Celia, and I bounce everything off her. But she's a big lady, so she's able for me to bounce off her. And also... Your family, if you're going to write about the past, dip into your family's memories. 
I wouldn't be able to do everything I do or wouldn't remember everything, but I'm stimulated by the memories of my sisters. Millie, you are fantastic. I'm so glad that you came on the show today and I want you to come back. Thank you very and much. Thank you very much. Oh, stay put to listen to our closing record. I think you'll enjoy it. <laughs> and we have the web out now published by Black and White. <laughs>